My wife and I moved out here from, from Frisco, and in every single new house that's built, there's two trees in the front yard. City, city requires it, you gotta have two trees in the front yard. Most of them, when you move in, look just like this. All nice and pretty, a few rocks around it, some mulch, looks great, right? Okay, there's a big problem there, and that is that you have covered up this part of the tree right here known as the root flare. And we're gonna talk more about the root flare in just a minute, but this is a huge mistake that people make, and the second is planting the tree too deep. After we get done in here, we're gonna go outside and we're gonna plant a tree and I'm gonna kinda of show you how we do it. Uh, the other thing I wanna make sure that you realize is you can go online and you can get information about how to plant a tree and you're gonna get a lot of different opinions. What I'm gonna tell you is the way we do it and, I'm gonna, and, and where we, how we do it is, is where we get success. There's plenty of other uh, opinions out there and if you wanna follow any of them, great, feel free to. First thing is dig the hole nice and wide and deep, about generally about two times the size of the container. You've got a, now you've got a deep hole about this, about this deep. What we want to prevent is putting the tree into the hole and then having the roots go out, hit the edge of the hole and start circling around. So we generally recommend scoring the sides of the hole and the bottom of the hole so that if a root goes out, and it starts going this way, it's gonna get redirected by, by something else there and start going off in a different direction rather than just around the hole. Uh, some schools of thought say, just plant it right in the soil you have. We generally recommend about 25, mixing in about 25% compost uh, just to provide some additional new nutrition to the soil and help get that biological activity stimulated. What you're gonna to wanna to do is You've got your nice deep hole. You're gonna to wanna to fill that hole up about halfway with your soil compost mix and flood it with water. And I'm talking about mud pie wet. Very, very wet. Get all the air pockets out of it. Make sure it's soaked and is gonna be a nice, warm, uh, nice wet area for those roots to go into when they're exposed after pulling them out of the container. What you'll start doing then is you'll place the tree in the hole and start backfilling with more dirt around the, uh, the tree and more water and keeping it very, very wet around the, around the, around the tree as you go. Um, eventually, you'll have the hole filled and it'll, it'll look like this. Now, a couple things to keep in mind. Of the two major mistakes, covering the, covering the root flare, the other is planting the tree too deep. I would rather plant a tree two or three inches too shallow than an inch or two too deep. Because when you plant it deep, again, you're gonna cover that root flare and it's gonna cause long-term health issues. At a bare minimum, never cover the graft up. We don't re recommend that. I say never, there's a couple of exceptions, but in general, any of the fruit trees you're gonna buy here, do not cover the graft. Uh, this, is, this is a a uh, picture that I stole from Howard Garrett. His website is dirtdoctor.com. He's great when it comes to uh, organic practices for uh, uh, gardening and, and planting trees. You'll notice on here, he's, he's put the root ball on the, on the bottom of the hole, which you can certainly do. We do recommend digging a little deeper, but you'll also notice that the tree is slightly above the grade of the rest of the ground. Again, he doesn't want to plant that tree too deep, you're also gonna get some settling with that tree over time. So plant it a little shallow, not, not too deep. Another thing that you'll see that he recommends goes back to the root flare. There's very little, if any, mulch or compost right here next to the tree, and it gets thicker as we go out, okay? The mulch is really good for uh, helping with the biological activity and also helping to hold in the water during the summertime, but you can't get it real deep here around the, around the, the root flare. We're just about done here, but I wanted to show a couple of pictures and examples of, of the root flare. When my wife and I bought our house here in 2014, we had a, we've got some large pecan trees. One of them in the backyard, you can kind of see right here a, a difference in the bark. And that's because there was soil and sand all the way up over a foot high on the pecan tree. It looked like this right here. And so I went in and pulled out yards and yards and yards of dirt around that tree to expose this root flare here. 
which is going to make the tree a lot healthier in the long term. Uh, this is another picture here. Again, you can see this, this line here. Uh, it was all covered with dirt. And then this is a, a cedar tree that was in our yard. And you can also see the difference in coloration here on this line of, tree, of uh, 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 the, the bottom of the trunk that was covered with soil versus above it that was exposed. This is a really big problem with trees long, for the long-term health. Keep an eye on it. If you've got trees in your yard that are already planted, it's not too late to go in and take off some of that additional soil, okay? When I plant this tree, I will usually remove the top little bit of soil until I know I've gotten to the, to the roots, okay? Um, people always ask me, well, if the tree is planted this deep, won't it just start growing new roots? In some cases, it will grow some little hair roots, but they're no good for the tree. Bark on the tree, the trunk, cannot turn into roots, but roots can turn into bark. And what I mean by that is if the roots are exposed, they will bark over, over time, and heal themselves and they'll be just fine. And it's okay if they're exposed, but you will never get enough root growth off, of a tr off the trunk of a tree to make it warrant being below grade. Yes, ma'am. Uh, generally what happens is you, uh, either you're going to get fungal issues, a disease, or it's going to be an entry point for, for pests to get in because the bark is going to rot and it's going to be an entry point for uh, pests to get in there. We can move outside and we'll do the, do the planting demonstration here in a couple of minutes. We've got our hole dug. Um, Michael, let's go ahead and start backfilling with the uh, uh, soil compost mixture. One other thing I would caution you, especially this time of year, the water in the hose is going to get real hot. Let it run until it's cool. Otherwise, you can burn the, the roots on the tree. So we're going to start backfilling this here. Again, get it about halfway and get it really, really nice and wet. Yes, it's already been mixed. That's good for now. Something else that I'm going to throw in here. Again, we we like to follow the practices that that uh, Howard Garrett uh, has. He's an excellent uh, organic gardener, and some of the beneficial things that he puts in when he's planting and does are things like the dried molasses, lava sand. Uh, a whole lot of other things. We don't carry all those, but I do have some of the dried molasses here. And I'm gonna take that and put some of that in the hole as well. What's that? Yeah, pretty much. But this is, this is great for stimulating the biological activity in the soil, which is what your plants need in order to grow healthily. Okay. It does not. It's strictly, it's strictly to get the, the microbes in the soil that are there to create healthy soil, prevent, uh, it also helps bring in the beneficial insects and also can help the beneficial micro or uh, bacterial and fungi to grow that you need in the soil in order to create healthy growing conditions. Okay, so we've got our tree. We've pulled it out of the container. It's got a nice healthy root system. A couple things I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna double check on this tree here and see where my roots start. You can see roots here, just like that. So it's, it's I didn't have to take off a whole lot, just a little bit here. Um, but you can see that we definitely have the uh, graph point well above the soil line, so that's not a problem. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my uh, pocket knife here, and I'm going to cut down through these uh, roots. I'm going to break them up, cause them to, uh, to separate, and this is going to give me a, a growth spurt of the roots 
to cause them to want to go out and uh, and develop new roots. Okay, that's pretty good. Sometimes on the bottom, you'll see this. Uh, Sometimes you'll see a little bit of spiraling around on the bottom of the container. Cut those babies off. All right, we're going to put it in the hole and start backfilling with water and soil. Okay, now, a couple things to keep in mind. I like my trees planted straight, so I always try to make sure they're sticking straight up. Um, right now, this tree is, we have a, a little bit of an unusual situation going on here because I've got a good six inches worth of, of uh, uh, tree bark, tree mulch that's been on the ground. So our, our soil line is, is actually a little bit deeper, but I still think that this tree is gonna be a little bit too deep. So I'm gonna pull it up a little bit. There we go. Now you'll notice the top of the root ball is above the adjoining soil here. So even if I get a little bit of settling, which I probably will, the tree's not gonna be too deep. I'll come back with a little bit of organic fertilizer. Again, about that much. Sprinkle it around. Maybe put a little more of my, of my compost out there. And then the last thing that I would do is um, I would take my wood chips and uh, um, pine or pine bark mulch or some kind of mulch, start off again really thin here around the base and kind of work my way out and get thicker as I go out. During the summertime, that's gonna be really beneficial in helping keep the soil in this area moist. Um, again, we're really focusing on East Texas and the conditions we have out here. The first summer, it, it's gonna get hot, it's gonna get dry. You're gonna to wanna to probably want to, want, want to water these trees heavily once or twice a week. It's better to water the, the tree heavily a lot at one time than a little bit each day. If you have a irrigation system and you think, oh, well, my, my sprinklers run for 15 minutes a day every day, not gonna be good enough. You gotta get those roots down there wet. So what I generally recommend is taking the hose, turning it on, letting it run for 10 or 15 minutes, or if you've got an irrigation system, letting it run for a while and really get nice and wet, then let it sit for a few days and start to dry out. You want those roots going out and exploring for water, but you don't want them to get dried out, okay? I, on a new tree, I would not rely on my irrigation system. I would take my hose and leave it there for 15 minutes. Okay, and again, that goes back to how much water do my trees need? It is gonna depend on a lot of things. What kind of soil you have, what kind of irrigation system you have, how long, how old is the tree, all those different factors. Pay attention to the tree, watch the tree. You'll see on like this peach tree here, if it was suffering, by the way, we planted this tree this year and it's got peaches on it. Um, if this tree was suffering, we would see the leaves turning yellow, we'd see them drooping, and that's a, a telltale sign. All I gotta do is stick my hand down in here, and about three inches down, I can feel it getting, getting moist. Okay, all right? You're welcome, thank you for coming. I really appreciate you coming out.